Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Rule the Waves 3 as Japan. Give me one moment to get my timer up in one second. Okay, and start timer. So I clearly misremembered because for some reason I thought we were still at war with Russia at the end of the last part, but evidently that is not actually the case. There we go. Sorry, I had to adjust my chair and microphone a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so evidently we're actually not at war with them. I'm not fully certain as to why I thought we were. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, now, I, unless I'm misremembering, one of these ships off screen I designed an upgrade for it. I think it might have been the Mutsukis. Yes, it was the Mutsukis. Um I don't believe there was anything particularly massive in regards to the changes that were made. I'm trying to recall, but I I'm really kind of blanking. Let me see. Uh, they got a bit more torpedo tubes. They got some mines, which they don't currently have. Four depth charge throwers, which I don't know how many they currently have. I'd have to double check on that. Still the eight five-inch guns. Five medium and a six light AA. Okay, different AA configuration. And they, okay, yeah, they also already have four depth charge throwers. Okay. So, yeah. That is a, that is a thing. <laughs> uh, let's just go ahead and continue on. We're sort of trying to do some rebuilds. Uh, wonderful. Yep. Thank you. Praise me more for building the submarines that realistically I was going to probably build anyway. It's just, you know, may not have necessarily built them at this exact time. Ooh, Britain. Who, it should be noted, actually has a budget that is not that much larger than ours. In fact, we have the, looks like, third largest budget in the world. Behind Great Britain and the USA. The USA is way, way out in front. Like, they're literally beating Britain's budget by, like, 200,000. That is a absolutely ridiculous budget that they have okie dokie then <laughs> uh, behind us is germany followed by france then russia oh no france then italy then russia then spain and china and honestly at this point i, I think i've basically given up on trying to get our shit from china back um i, I just don't see it happening they'd have to get an ally and uh, good luck with that. I mean, they could theoretically, but their issue is who would want to be their ally? They don't have anything worthwhile, unfortunately for them. I'm going to say, because tensions aren't that bad right now, we should condemn the adventurous policies of Great Britain and strengthen our own navy. Close to mastering forward firing ASW mortars. Wonderful. Scientists report that they are working on the problems of proximity fuses, but success has so far eluded them. Uh, no, don't bother with that right now. Uh, Germany is scrapping a destroyer. Britain scrapped a destroyer, battle cruiser, and a dreadnought. France scrapped a handful of destroyers and laid down a few others. Russia laid down a few destroyers. USA laid down a brand new Shangri-La. Well, I say it's brand new. I don't know if the class is brand new, but it's a brand new of the class, at least. Uh, Shangri-La class CV. A couple destroyers. Scrapped a handful of destroyers. Uh, Spain scrapped a destroyer. China, I don't know why China's even bothering to scrap destroyers, because they don't have the... <laughs> They just don't have the resources. They probably shouldn't be scrapping their stuff unless it's because they had to cut their budget. 
one of the two. Because that was... Yeah, getting rid of that one, they only have nine destroyers now. That is not good at all for them. Uh, now, one thing I wanted to double check. Did we... No, we still have the Hoshos as our latest and greatest CV design. Which is fine because they're a decent design for now. Uh, but we could certainly do better. In fact, I say that and I've even gone and designed us a potential successor. Uh, this is a further refinement, in a sense, of the previous uh, CV2 design, hence it's just called CV2A because it's not a massive departure. It's basically just saying, hey, we can now build larger CVs, so let's do that. And let's take advantage of some of the stuff we have in terms of technological advancements. So this manages to actually get us up to a 100 air capacity, which is great. Now, granted, we should note in regards to this that um, this is not going to this is still not going to have enough um, weight remaining, even after some various technological improvements, to be able to actually go to jet capable without cutting back the air capacity. Um, which, I mean, isn't the worst thing ever. Certainly, the reality is initially, we don't need to do that. Technically, you don't need to go jet capable if you're just replacing the fighters with light jet fighters. The only reason why you would absolutely have to go jet capable is for putting heavy jet fighters, jet attack, um, and that's it actually, um, on there. Um, add to that as well that by not being jet capable, light jet fighters, I believe I said they were one to one with fighters. I, that's actually slightly incorrect. Um, I think the manual says they're 1.5, which I don't think is actually correct. I think it's actually 1.2 or something. I think it, I think the game even actually mentions that somewhere that it's like 1.2 if you don't go jet capable. So the manual just probably never got updated if they change that value at some point, or um, maybe I'm misremembering there and it's not actually 1.2 and it is in fact 1.5 like the manual says. Uh, but I believe the manual is correct and that it is actually 1.5. Or excuse me, it is, I believe the manual is incorrect rather and it's actually like 1.2 when you're not jet capable when it comes to light jet fighters uh, compared to normal uh, fighters. So, I mean, technically we could go and at least slap those on there without refitting the design. Um, but either way, that's something that would probably happen further down the road. Now, granted, we're, we're also slapping some armor on these things. Um, uh, God, I'm trying to remember the name of the channel. I think it's like RVT or something like that. You know, he, he did, presented a pretty good argument for um, two different types of designs for your aircraft carriers. Aircraft carriers are going to be in very dangerous locations namely those are going to be places like the mediterranean and the baltics um you're probably going to want to put flight deck and hangar armor on them for the simple reason that those areas particularly in the late game tend to be very um competitive when it comes to the number of aircraft that are up um you're just going to be constantly under attack in those two regions, especially in the late game. Early game, it's not too bad. The ranges on aircraft doesn't really enable them to do it that well. But in the late game, oh boy, does it become a mess. And we're at that point where it would be a mess to fight in the Mediterranean and the Baltics. So we would absolutely need to put armor on the uh, ship if we were on our carriers. Um, if we're fighting in those regions. But... Fighting in places like Asia, where aircraft coverage isn't quite as extreme as it can be in the Mediterranean Baltic, um, there's not quite as much of a push to put flight deck and hangar armor on there. 
Um, certainly, I would say it doesn't really hurt if you have the spare weight, um, but we might reconfigure this design and actually strip that out because that is a little over, uh, probably roughly, roughly like 4.5 K weight that we could free up roughly, give or take a couple hundred. Um, so we could realistically save quite a bit of weight that we could then, of course, use for making this jet capable. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so that that's something to keep in mind. Um, is this still the largest we can build? We didn't get anything? Yeah, okay, we haven't gotten anything new yet. Granted, I'm not surprised. I'm pretty sure I designed that after the last part. But let's go ahead and uh, just move on to the next turn and uh, see what happens. Uh, submarine, ship's worked up. Torpedo protection four is always nice. So that means those, that as well as a few other theoretical designs will need to be refitted or uh, modified to potentially take into account the better torpedo protection. Uh, light materials for hull mounts would be absolutely wonderful. Modern quadruple medium AA mounting. So now we'll technically, we'll actually have like quad bofors. Or, well, I guess technically the Japanese equivalent of the 40 millimeter bofor. Uh, improves medium AA effectiveness and reduces medium AA topside load, which also means some of our designs might be worth refitting to slap a little bit more AA capacity on them. Uh, neutral Peter Bomber is ready to go. Wonderful. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the Yashimas, who are somehow still in service. Uh, I mean, these are 1915, so, yeah, 1915, 1960, so they're approaching 30 years of service. Um, admittedly, there's not a whole lot we can do in terms of refitting them anymore at this point. There just really is nothing we can do on that. Let's uh, increase your radar limit to three. So when we get the next tier, you can automatically go ahead and do that upgrade. Um, and the reality is, I think at this point, see, the tooltip here is quite nice. So light AA will dissuade enemy air attacks, but are primarily useful against slower aircraft. Medium AA guns are initially not very effective, but with better tech, their effectiveness will increase, especially as the aircraft get faster. Uh, basically, one thing you can think of is the light AA guns are basically slapping 50 cals, little 50 cal turret mounts. Well, well, not necessarily turret mounts, but you know what I mean, little uh, mounts for 50 caliber like M2 Brownings or, you know, other rifle caliber AA guns. They're not particularly effective at actually destroying or damaging aircraft. Um, particularly as time goes on. So I don't really know if there is a real use anymore for light AA guns compared to medium AA guns. Because these medium AA guns are, as I mentioned, you know, slapping things like 40 millimeter bofors and things like that. Um, or, you know, whatever your national equivalent is. On to... And especially now, since we can work freaking quad mounting these things. So the reality is actually medium going solely medium AA may or may not be better. I'm not quite sure on that actually. Um, I do know that in the future we will want to still slap some light AA guns on our ships um, once we get um, CIWS unlocked in like the 60s. <laughs> um, but by that point we'll have a lot of spare weight. Um, well, not spare weight, but we'll have a fair bit of topside load capacity freed up. Because once we get radar-directed medium AA, the game throws a fit if you have any more than eight. I say it throws a fit. You can do it, but it'll tell you, hey, are you sure you want to, you know, slap more than eight on there? They're not quite as effective. So, yeah, we'll just do a, a quick little rebuild here. Um, You know what? Do I want to know that we don't really have the weight to significantly increase the AA capacity or the rounds per gun of the secondaries. So let's not do that. 
Um, let's do go ahead and replace the turrets though with the nicer, newer, late dreadnought design as opposed to the normal dreadnought design. That is a purely graphical change. So those will take three months to do. Um, let's use up some of this extra budget. Uh, we have two Kinagasas in the works. We have a fair few of the Kitsushimas in the work. We have two Suas already out. Do I want to try to squeeze out another Suo? It would basically take up the rest of our budget. And we're in the 40s. Um, how, how does the, the AI feel about dreadnoughts and whatnot? Uh, the U.S. and Italy are still building more. Uh, but basically all of them seem to have shifted largely to focusing on CVs. I think we're going to go ahead and agree with the rest of the game, and we're going to go ahead and focus our attention on CVs. We're going to go ahead and free up all that weight. Um, I don't recall, can't actually, let's check with the host shows real quick, just to double check. Can you reapply? light deck no you cannot so if we get rid of it we cannot add it back but theoretically our cvs should never be in a position where they're actually under air attack in theory so you know it's something to keep in mind Lap a ton more AA on these things. There we go. Not quite even there, but we'll survive. Uh, we have a ludicrous amount of rounds per gun at 500 rounds per gun with, uh, what is it? Like 12 guns or something. Uh, no, actually 16 guns total. Eight turrets of two guns each. Yeah. That is a lot of uh, <laughs> capacity there. Uh, we're going to stick with oil and turbine because there is no good reason to go diesel right now. We still don't have the tech that uh, makes it cheaper in terms of weight. Now, do I need two fire control positions? That is roughly like 50, 60 weight. Uh, 40 actually, apparently. Yeah, okay, well, it's 40 on its own, but it adjusts some other stuff as well. So technically it's like 50, 60 somewhere in that range in total. Do I need to? Again, you, you shouldn't really be under fire, generally speaking, and I don't know if, I don't think multiple fire control positions makes any difference regarding your, basically the actual effectiveness of your heavy AA. So maybe we can slap a few more. There we go. Yeah, we'll go down to one, slap a few more light AA guns in its place. Things are bloody expensive. Who will survive? Hmm. Any other? Well, you know what? Let's uh, do a four inch actual deck deck. Well, at that point, maybe just do a flight deck. I don't know, what's the weight of uh, an extra 200, or an extra 2 inches here? 
Uh, it's basically a straight doubling, so it's an extra 3,000 some odd change. Ah, but I'm pretty sure that's technically cheaper than actually armoring the flight deck itself. We'll slap one inch on the flight deck and on the hangar side so that there's a little bit of actual protection there dedicated. But again, generally, in theory, you should never be under attack. Uh, at least that is the theory. Uh, let's go ahead and build this as is. I'm going to tell you to suggest a name. We will go with the Kaga. What are the names that we have as an option? We have the Soryu, Shokaku, Zuikaku, Hio, Shienano, Taiho, Unryu, Amagi, and Katsuragi. No, we'll go with the Kaga. I like the Kaga. Go ahead and build that. That'll take four months. Um, besides, technically we need a new CV design anyway because our current Hoshos are considered uh, out of date when it comes to the build menu. So that's fine. I'll work on the problems of thermo-mechanically treated armor materials, but so far success eludes us. Unexpected advances in radar and electronics. Wonderful. So we get radar-assisted gunnery, so fire control radar 1. So that'll improve our ship's capabilities when it comes to firing on stuff. Those will ever so slowly get added to ships. Okay, new destroyer commissioned. Billy allocates more money. Great Britain gets more money. Um, this one I'm confused by. Intelligence support Great Britain inspired by our dreadnought building program. What dreadnought building program? I'm not building any more dreadnoughts. I, sure, I built two. That came out last year. But that was last year. Did it take you a year to learn that I built new dreadnoughts? And it's not like you're going to spend those on dreadnoughts. I pretty much guarantee you that. Whatever. Um, we're going to go ahead and I think... While we have the funds a little bit, we're going to go ahead and queue up two more... Uh, do I want... Armored cruisers or light cruisers? We don't really have any light cruisers, but we don't really have any armored cruisers either, if we're being honest. But we have four light cruisers being built. And I have four in service right now. Well, when it comes to the armored cruisers, I have five in service with two more on the way, giving us seven there. Five there, so you know what? Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and queue up two more Kinogasas. Roughly around the time the Kagas are actually ready to be built, um, we will have freed up a fair bit of budget to at least queue up one, maybe two, if we're willing to lose money for a few turns. Uh, China is. Wanting to sell us quality 07 inch guns. We will buy it just so it gets us out of our uh, research queue. And forward firing ASW mortars, wonderful. Uh, the Awamis now need to go in for a rebuild. Replace all your turrets with the nice, fancy new late dreadnought designs. There we go. These are fairly pricey, actually. Um, oh, yes. Do I... Do I dual purpose you for an additional three heavy AA factor, or do I get rid of you and use the weight to just add more ammo? I kind of lean towards just getting rid of you to use it up for more ammo although apparently that's not quite enough we're gonna have to do a full rebuild replacing the machinery 
to get enough weight, which I'm fine with because that means by also doing that, I can get rid, or I can add more rather, medium AA guns. So this is going to be a very expensive rebuild. But I think it'll improve the designs quite a bit more than it would have otherwise. We're going to lose money for a few turns. We'll survive. Um, I say a few turns, but those are going to take a year, of course, to actually do. But whatever, we'll survive. Torpex Warhead, so they do more damage. Wonderful. Um, not right now, because I don't have the money to actually queue up any of them. Uh, wonderful, the Nationalists got us some more money, so maybe we actually will be able to queue up Akaga. Uh, U.S. is offering to... Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, America. I will gladly buy that. It's not that expensive either. Especially since I just got a budget increase. Oh, well, that sucks. Literally get this right as I told the Awamis to go in for a rebuild that included replacing machinery, which I'm pretty sure weight saving on hull is still affected by. Circular AA screen enables circular screens and improves AA effectiveness, allows BBs to screen CVs. I would probably never do that, but, you know, it's a thing we can technically do now. Uh, some of these still need to be improved. In fact, actually, let's improve everybody because evidently uh, everybody can be improved. This is going to cost quite a bit of money, so maybe we don't queue up a Kaga for another couple of turns. Because that's going to be four turns for each of these, and they are whatever the hell they cost to actually improve them. But after this, there will be no more improvements. I believe we set the max air base size to 100, so that'll be that. Uh, once the Ikitsushimas, or at least the first batch of Ikitsushimas are done, yes, we're going to extend our alliance with the U.S., um, as I was saying, once the first batch of Akitsushimas are done, we will be, um, I think, good to queue up Akaga. Ooh. 24 months. 10% discount, another Kinugasa. I'll take it. Spain is proposing a five-year security agreement. Now, Spain is not a particularly good ally. They're not the worst, but they're not my first pick, nor are they my second pick. When it comes to who I would like to fight, which is namely going to be Britain, they're my third pick. My first pick generally will be Germany. Um, for a few reasons, the biggest one being that Germany is useful for fighting two people, Britain and Russia. Um, second pick would be France. And the reason for this is that both of them would be able to theoretically, uh, keep a decent portion of the Royal Navy occupied in Northern Europe because they wouldn't really be able to afford to go anywhere else. Well, if they abandon Northern Europe, they get blockaded, uh, which basically just gives me a free win, um, outside of still needing to fight them elsewhere, but Beyond that, they give us a free win, effectively. Um, or they can... Um, well, actually, that's basically it, yeah. If they leave Northern Europe, they get blockaded, and I get to duke it out with their navy, or they stay in Northern Europe. I don't really fight them outside of what ships they can spare. And it has Germany and or France, maybe even both. Both would be great. Um, I mean, both with the USA would be a freaking godsend, honestly. I could get all three, but I'll survive with just the US and then either Germany or France. Personally, I, I for Germany, like I said, between the two, also just, you know, looking at the fact that the budgets are what they are, 
Um, I'm even more inclined to refer Germany. They got a larger budget. They got a larger navy. Um, so they're a much more even match for Britain, um, especially once you add in the ships that the U.S. would be able to potentially spare. So I'm going to say no. In fact, we're going to say that we should avoid entanglements that will tie our foreign policy to an irresponsible and dangerous nation, because evidently Spain is a dangerous nation. I think they're crazy, but that's whatever, I guess. Um, now, admittedly, the U.S. probably wouldn't be able to spare a whole lot in a war against Britain. For a few reasons, the biggest one being that they've got their own shit to deal with before they'd be able to get to Northern Europe. Um, and with the way the AI is when it comes to naval invasions, um, particularly the allied AI, I don't know what it is. Enemy AI is willing to invade, like, no problem. But allied AI just seems to be like, no, we're not invading. Why? We saw that last time with Italy, for some reason, not invading Tunisia, despite the fact that they had naval supremacy in the Mediterranean to be able to do so. No resistance. They could have done it. They would have had a lot of free battles for in support of uh, ground combat or land combat, whatever the hell it's actually phrased as. And they'd have been able to take Tunisia for free. But instead, they decided to not take it. They didn't take it as part of the peace agreement either. The Allied AI is very passive when it comes to naval invasions for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, I, I can't really say if it was better at all in Rule the Waves 2 because you didn't have allies in the traditional sense so much. Well, I mean, you did, and the same as how it worked here, basically, but, um, it wasn't quite, uh, as obvious, really, in my opinion. They generally didn't do much there either, honestly. Just something about the Allied AI does not invade holdings for some reason, which I just do not understand in the slightest. Maybe that'll change. Maybe that'll, you know, that's a, like an issue with an, with the uh, coding or something, because they really should invade more often. There we go, jet aircraft on carriers. Enables jet-capable aircraft carriers. Wonderful. Um, now, granted, I don't think we have light jet fighters researched. No, we don't. So that's an absolutely useless tech for us right now. Give it a few more turns. Maybe it'll actually be useful. Damn. The Kitsushimas are going to have trouble meeting their design speed, which sucks. This many officers seem to have the impression that Kaigen Daisa Yokota, unassigned below average lucky timid, is rather too cautious and weak willed. Having him dismissed from the service would encourage the proper offensive spirit. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to say yes, mostly because he's below average anyway, so I don't really care to have him. Okay, we have freed up enough to queue up a Kaga. Let's go ahead and do that. Fuck the diet. Tensions low. Literally, tensions just went up with Russia and Britain relatively recently. I mean, it's been a little bit, but nonetheless. But they're like, no. Tensions are low. Whatever. Revolution in China. Um, send a strong squadron to bombard the capital until our citizens are released. China wants to buy a torpedo bomber. Why not? This will benefit our aircraft industry. It's not like we're fighting China anytime soon anyway. They can have all of our tech and it will literally make no difference. They will not fight us. Simply because they do not have the budget to field a navy that would enable them to actually fight us. Ooh, six-inch auto loader. 
and the Spanish have invented the IFF system. Let's see. Do you have anything here regarding tension changes? Does not look like any random increases and in whatnot in tensions. Okay. Okay, now we need to redo our aircraft here. So let's just go ahead and disband all. Oh, whoops. You're not actually fully built up. That's my bad. I grabbed the wrong base. Because I thought that they were at 100 already, but they were not. Let's try this again. Let's go with Rangoon. Disband all your units. I'm going to tell you to auto-add. And then copy for all of the 100s. Yep. Disband all existing. Okay, there we go. Also, let's not reserve our carriers in hindsight. That's probably not the best idea. Uh, the Minikazes, any upgrades we can do with you that would do anything useful? Probably not. Uh, no. Cannot do anything useful with you. Could remove a gun and then we can do that. Can I remove the gun and do that without doing a replace machinery? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Hmm. Get rid of torpedo mounts. Okay, actually, change, change of plans. Maybe... Maybe. There we go. Keep the number of guns. We'll just get rid of a torpedo mount. There we go. That's probably the cheapest we can do it. And the Minikazes aren't that great anyway. They are an ancient, ancient design. So let's do that. There we go. I can just slap that on you without needing to do anything fancy with the uh, Moshizuki's. Wonderful. Uh, cannot increase your radar limit uh, just because of weight. So we won't be doing that, evidently. It's fine. We'll survive. Go ahead and send you guys in for a quick refit as well. The Shokazes. Can I increase you? Nope. Not without making changes to your gun configuration as well, or doing a replace machinery, which I don't really care to do at this time. Send you guys in as well for a quick refit. Uh, let's go to Division Editor, because I know we lost destroyers in some of the other divisions, so... Go ahead and replace those with various Mutsukis. And that still leaves us with a few spares. Let's increase our dock size as well. There we go. I think this is the wait, the technology we were waiting for. I believe this is the only one, but there might be another one that I'm, if I'm misremembering, but I believe this is the only one that we're waiting for when it came to diesels. VHF radio and aircraft increases cap effectiveness. Wonderful. Uh, we lost a shit ton of money all of a sudden. I probably should read the messages, but I already clicked next turn, so too late. 
Uh, France is wanting to sell us IFF. I will take it. Reduces risk of friendly fire. I've literally never had friendly fire like that. But okay. Teardrop Hall. Wonderful. Gyroscopic sights for light AA and medium AA. Improving the effectiveness of both. Wonderful. Nope. Nope. I really wish I had seen what the hell happened to our budget, but didn't notice it until after I clicked next turn, so too late. Uh, nope, that's fine. He's below average anyway. I don't care to keep him around, so he's put a blot on the honor of the Navy. He deserves the most severe punishment the law will allow. Let's get rid of him. Uh, increases 5 and 6 inch A effectiveness. Wonderful. Deck launched interceptors, improving cap effectiveness. Wonderful. Um, I miss no. You, oh no. Never mind. It was the Kashimas that I did refit here at the start. Um, this Kuba's also. Technically should be going in for a refit, a fairly quick one to just add some more medium AA guns. Or preferably completely replace your armament with medium AA guns if, if we can. There we go. That's a bit of a pricey one, but we'll survive. And it's worth it. Although, admittedly, the Sakubas aren't that great of a design anymore. Um, but whatever, we'll live. Fuck, Germany and Russia signed an alliance. Oh, improvement to our most recent torpedo bomber. Bit more range is really the main thing, but also slightly larger bombs, although I don't really care too much for the bombs, honestly. Do I want a new fighter? Ah, screw it, we'll take a new fighter. Do I want range? I mean, it could stand to be a bit more range on it, I think, personally. I think it's not quite where we want it to be. Improves firefighting and carriers, three-tier air defense perimeter, increases cap and AA effectiveness with air search radar, guided bombs, medium bombers might carry guided bombs. Uh, tensions with Spain and China go down. We are now making money again. Not a whole lot, but it is technically making money. The Ottawa is commissioned. The uh, Atsuyis has finished her reconstruction along with the Awami and the Karama and the Sakuba. Uh, Italy is interested in buying something from us. Heavier than air, night air operations, by all means. You're not a threat to me, Italy, so I will let you take it. Close to mastering six inch auto loaders. Don't care too much for that right now. Uh, ejection seats. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, landing craft, I do not care for. Okay, we can go ahead and queue up another Kaga. Let's do that. Uh, I think I might want to increase my intel potentially on Britain. Since it seems to be going up more there we go six inch auto loaders again i don't care for that right now um, that might be useful down the road however once we get to missiles because we're not necessarily going to be relying as heavily on guns at that point um i don't did the wamis get their rebuilds like they should have yes they did okay i couldn't quite recall 
Suos need to go in though. Don't know why you're having showing tertiary mounts because I don't have tertiary guns. Quite sure what that was all about. My timer going off. Let's go ahead and finish uh, adjusting these real quick. And then that'll be it for this part. There we go. There we go. Like that, like that a whole lot. Fairly pricey, mostly just due to the size of the ships, more than anything else. Um, you know what? Considering that those should be relatively quick, we'll go ahead and wait for the Suos to finish their rebuild, and then we'll move on to, or we'll end the part. Oh, okay, Britain is considering a naval rearmament program again. Um, they don't have any allies, luckily for us. Um, and in fact, they're actually kind of getting upset with the U.S. as well. Uh, we should condemn the adventurous policies of Great Britain and strengthen our own navy. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and kick that up to high at this point. You still need to expand, evidently. Okay. Thought we finally got everybody up to where they needed to be, but evidently not. Um, try that again. There we go. Completely did that wrong. First time. Make sure that everybody is at 100 out of 100. When it comes to the authorized air strength compared to the base capacity, you are not... There we go. The only person who is missing right now is um, Pontianic because, well, they haven't even bothered adding anything yet. Now, question is, do we do... Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and do Night Capable on everything that we can, which currently looks to be basically just the torpedo bombers. Uh, yep, just the torpedo bombers for now. Makes them a bit more expensive, but night, uh, night capable torpedo bombers would be potentially helpful. Um, although I suppose what I could do is... Ah, shoot. Well, let me do that. Me... Can I transfer you guys to the... Yes, I can. Wonderful. There we go. Uh, move those guys to the reserve. So we can at least get them built up. And then as soon as Pontianic is done, we can transfer these guys to Pontianic. Um, and they'll already have the experience and the, um, the aircraft. Uh, for, you know, what little it's worth, technically speaking. <laughs> you know, considering we're not likely going to war immediately, we've got a bit of time to prepare. OK, 
Okay, relations with Germany went down. Evidently, Germany liked our uh, sticking it to the Brits. Okay, the cows, well, the nations need to go in for a refit. But I think these guys are going to have to do a very expensive one for us to be able to do anything with them realistically. There we go. Now, let's just see if we can manage to do that without doing it like that. Um, almost, almost, not quite. The reality is I'm going to say, screw it, I think it's worth it anyway. Try that again. There we go. Okay. That's how we can do it without needing to uh, rebuild, which is wonderful for us because that makes this a cheaper rebuild. Also less time consuming, which is great considering that again, tensions with Britain are going up. So might have a war popping off there, potentially in the near future, which is good to an extent because I kind of want that. A major foreign policy crisis has erupted with Great Britain. What is your advice on how to handle the situation? Uh, maybe don't do the thing that I think this is effectively treated like issuing an ultimatum and can basically lead directly to war. So I'm going to take the slightly more, well, uh, do we want to? Our ships aren't really in position for it if it, does, if it is treated that way. So I'm just, I'm going to say, screw it. I want the prestige. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully it doesn't treat it like an ultimatum, and we're basically just saying, no, if, if war happens, we'll be ready. Instead of saying, well, let's, you know, get ready to safeguard our interests. You know, this is sort of a more defensive concept of if a war breaks out. This is the, no, we're taking their shit if it breaks out. They know what's coming for them. fighter prototypes um it's basically between mitsubishi and nakajima because those have the best range uh excuse me the best speeds rather the range however looks to lean very heavily more towards the nakajima and oh this is a lot more effective when it comes to shooting down enemy aircraft that is a big ass bomb to be sticking on a prop why would we be slapping a 1600 pound bomb on a prop i mean great job guys you figured out how to do it so we can if we need to for some reason but we shouldn't we shouldn't be needing to do that in my opinion at least um but we're gonna go with the nakajima best speed best range slightly more maneuverable than the competition slightly tougher than the competition so it's as far as i'm concerned better in every single measurable way so oh, like jet fighter thank you when the hell did we get that because you didn't give it to me as a tech or anything or there was no pop-up indicating we got it because we didn't get it when we got jet capable i know we didn't but let's go ahead and do this so do we want range or speed the reality is considering that it's already a jet it should already be generally a lot faster than our current ones 
So I think we're going to take speed and reliability. Or excuse me, range and reliability. Ooh, shit. That... Okay, yep, that tipped us way over the edge. <laughs> ah, shoot. Um, I think, yeah, you guys max out at five. Shoot, 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 shoot. do <laughs> okay uh was not exactly planning for this to happen that quickly um we need to quickly move troops into positions uh maybe we can get a surprise attack on singapore or something that would be wonderful um how large of a fleet do we want to send down to singapore or well just southeast asia again hopefully a surprise attack on singapore Yeah, Singapore is the main base. Um, let's build naval bases in uh, Burma. Because uh, we're going to need a bit more if we want to potentially invade uh, Ceylon. Well... Uh, Sri Lanka now. Uh, we cannot invade Italy because it, or not Italy, India, because it is a value 40. Anything over, I believe it's, a, I think anything from 10 and up, you cannot naval invade. Something like that. <sighs> Shoot, okay. Uh, I mean, we can send basically the entire fleet down there. But there's really not much of a reason to keep anything of the fleet in Northeast Asia, technically speaking. Okay, now we're going to need to adjust stuff. So what is the base? Uh, it's Rangoon, isn't it? You're Rangoon, aren't you? Yes, you are. Let's go ahead and activate Rangoon. We're going to activate uh, you. Uh, do we want to activate Batavia and Sorabaja? Probably. And activate the bases that are, you know, potentially in the line of fire. Get them fully uh, crewed out. Now again, what do I want to send? Okay, so... Let's see. You are missing a light cruiser division. I'm just going to put that out there. You're missing a light cruiser division. You have one, you have three, you have... So you could have two. Um, kind of... Whatever. <laughs> three goes to two and two goes to three. Sure, that's, that's how we'll do it. Whatever. Um, you're going to be a screening force for Battle Division 3. Excuse me. Did I say screening division? I meant a scout division. Um, so, okay. I think what we're going to do... Do I want to send the big fancy new ones? Or do I want to send a slightly older design? I think that's the big question. Do we send the fancy new ones or do we send an older design? We got the Yashimas with our 14 inch guns or we can send out the Awamis with their 16s. I'm leaning towards just sending out the Awamis, although I'm not a big fan of the poor um, experience that they have. Not a fan of that, but uh, screw it. You're going to go to Southeast Asia. 
along with the rest of your crew. We're going to send Care Division 2 down there, although I think what we're going to want to do is actually provide a dedicated escort team for you. So we're going to have Carrier or Destroyer Division 8. Yes. Destroyer Division 8 is going to act as a screen for 2nd Carrier Division. So I'm going to send 2. The host shows are very valuable. I'm going to send two, I think. You're going to be a support, I think, for you, actually. You're going to do a similar thing for Carrier Division 1. Okay, Carrier Division 2 is also going to sail for Southeast Asia alongside its escorts. Just a help supplement our forces. The Takaos need a refit, but they're not getting it right now because war is on the verge of breaking out with Britain. Hopefully, we will be able to see a potential for a surprise attack on Singapore. If we can take Singapore... Uh, double check something real quick. Is Western Australia considered? Okay, okay, it's considered Southeast Asia. So you provide 50, 40, and 10. So that's how they get to the 100. Basically, if we take Singapore, we practically have their base capacity. We can then quickly try to move on to take Malaya. Um, we are not going to be able to take Western Australia off of them, at least outside of a peace deal, and it would have to be a really damn good peace deal to do it. Um, Eastern Australia is considered to be part of the South Pacific. If we could take that, that would be kind of nice because it's worth a very pretty penny in terms of base capacity and would actually enable us to move into the South Pacific um, with a serious force, although I don't know if we really would care to take it if given the opportunity. Um, beyond that, we've got a bit of basing capacity in the Indian Ocean that we might want to station a few ships in, just so that we have something there. Do I have anybody free that could actually do that, though? I don't think we do. I'm pretty sure everybody is already tied to somebody outside of me slapping a handful of destroyers which I don't think is a great idea personally um, until the Kinugasas are out in okay first one is two months oh no excuse me first one is one month until the Kinugasas are out I'm not I'm really lacking on the uh, cruisers to fill out the cruiser divisions that we can actually put stuff out there. Um, we're going to go ahead and make sure that everybody is set to active fleet if they're not already. Because we need to f make sure that they're all ready to fight. Try to minimize these poor crew qualities as much as we possibly can. Um, now the question is, how many submarines do you have, Britain? You have 15. Okay, good. So I should not need that much in terms of ASW trade protection value, which is great. Ooh, Russia has 97. Damn. I mean, I can't really fault Russia, Spain, and China for opting for a submarine fleet because sort of historically, like it happened with Germany, eh, they don't quite have the ability to field a large surface fleet. So it's probably best if they try to focus on convoy raiding and surprise attacks on ships. Now I think we're going to also go ahead and say, hey, let's auto start auto building more medium range submarines or do I want to do mine laying submarines? 
They have the same effectiveness as medium range submarines, but we get a lot more in terms of... They add mines everywhere they go, which has the benefit of making it harder for the enemy to fight us. Uh, we're going to build some more fortifications here. You guys do not have a medium torpedo boat squadron, do you? Just double check. No, you do. For some reason, it just doesn't show here. It's weird to me. It shows the batteries, but it doesn't show the medium torpedo boat squadron, which you evidently do have in Burma. Not quite sure what the deal is there. Okay, but they do exist. So never mind. I was going to build more, but that's evidently not needed. Um, we could build some beefy, beefy turrets. I don't think we've got, we're going to do that. Um, let's do mine laying submarines. Build me one a turn for the foreseeable future. Okay, that's going to be it for this turn. We went a little over. Um, I, you know, I'm trying to do 45 minutes or so now, but <laughs> try to get to a decent stopping point instead of being in the middle of something. So that is going to be it for this part. I will see you all next time where it looks like we are on the verge of war with Britain. They may not declare war on us next part, or, you know, next turn, but we should be getting into a war with them very, very soon. And hopefully the U.S. doesn't decide to sit on the sidelines for too long because we're going to need their help. Um even if only to split the Royal Navy in half. If we can split the Royal Navy in half, preferably for me, the U.S. takes the bulk of it. Uh, but I don't, I don't really see that being the case, just because I think the AI does prioritize the player when uh, forced to choose where to send its ships, so they're probably going to send most of their ships to Southeast Asia just because... Uh, but hopefully the U.S. can put up a good fight in uh the well probably mostly going to be in on the east coast not so much in the caribbean but hopefully they put up a bit of a fight in the caribbean as well and hopefully we get a surprise our ships get into position fast enough that we can do a surprise attack on singapore and take it because if we can take that in the early days of the war again that basically will have their base capacity in southeast asia and so even if they want to send the entire fleet down here to fight me they're going to start taking very, uh, well, I was going to say very bad attrition, and that is correct, but I was going to phrase it in a very poor way that just did not make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they'll start taking a lot of attrition if they try to send the entire fleet to Southeast Asia, um, but doubly so if we can take Singapore um, and preferably as well Malaya in the early days of the war. The thing is, invading Singapore, or fighting around Singapore and Malaya is a real pain in the ass because most of those fights happen here. Um, I don't recall what the name of the straits are here, basically, but right outside Malacca is where a lot of the fights tend to happen in this region, which I'm not a fan of. Those are a pain in the ass to fight in, um, especially because it's going to be much closer to their air bases than ours. I'd rather fight them out here, you know, closer to... Borneo rather than Singapore when I have to actually fight their ships. But yeah, so that'll be it for this part. I will see you all next time. Let's see how long we have to prepare before Britain actually decides to declare war on us. Um, because we haven't even gotten our intel up to very um, to the highest level just yet. Um, at least it's not in effect yet. We're technically still working with medium um, intelligence. But until next time, goodbye and farewell.